Hey Vinyl Community, Jeff here again, and while I was doing the other video that I did, that's probably posted a couple days before this, I wanted to go ahead and take care of this next in the line of 10 great albums from certain years. In this case, we're at 1989. Again, refresher, these are albums that I own on vinyl, so if there's a missing one in here that you're like, I can't believe you didn't include blah blah blah, it's probably because either A, it's just not on my top 10 list, or B, I don't have it on vinyl. There are quite a few albums that I noticed in 1989 that I'm still missing when it comes to vinyl. Limiting the vinyl, making this easy and fun. For me at least. 10 great albums ranked according to what I feel like today <laughs> from my collection that I have on vinyl. Let's get into this. This one was hard because it bounced around from high to low to high to low, but I, I, I kept shuffling and kept shuffling. Um, considering how high their previous album was on my list, um, it was hard to put this at the bottom, but it was really hard to put anything at the bottom. King's X, Gretchen Goes to Nebraska. First album, absolutely stellar in my opinion. Second album, same. I just found a lot of other albums this particular year that kept bumping it down I, again you asked me in an hour and this album could be number two you know, who knows great album i love king's x these first couple albums were just phenomenal uh just there was nothing they could not go wrong they started experimenting a little later and some of the albums are like okay that can give or take that one but this one first album this one perfect number nine this is one that bounced around a little bit too Slip of the Tongue by White Snake. I love White Snake. This era is the one and only album where you've got Steve Vai and Rudy Sarzo and Tommy. You got this like super group feel with Steve Vai and Rudy and all them coming in. And even though you had a super group feel on, was it the, the prior album, the actual band that recorded the prior album, you know, wasn't that band. They did the touring, but now they're doing an album with those guys, Tommy and Rudy, and they're bringing Steve vibe um phenomenal album love this album i was taking a look at it and you know i hear uh, kids got claws on the radio occasionally but other than that well no i don't know other than that i don't really not many of the songs on this album seem to still be getting much airplay whereas you get a lot of them from you know the other from 1987 and some of the other albums but still love this album great stuff and yes number nine now, there are going to be some weird ones in here that some of you all may not know, but number eight, Guardian First Watch. 1989 was another great year for Christian hard rock and metal. First Guardian album produced by Oz Fox of Striper. I had been following these guys since the demo days. I had been talking to Dave Bach on the phone just because we didn't have internet back then. He had sent me demo tapes. I'd heard previous recordings. They've, they've done things. I'd followed these guys for couple years prior to this so this was a big waiting for this to come out now i will admit you know osfox did the production i felt that when it came out it was really polished compared to the demos and stuff and i thought they lost a little bit of the edge love the album still love the album but in comparison to the material that this album came from demo wise or not demo wise but self recorded stuff that material, I think, had a little bit more beefiness to it. Just, you know, production made it sound a little cleaner. Still love the album, though. There's no way that this is not going to be on my ranking. There you go, number eight. Um, this one was, I had to put this in there, <laughs> number seven, Udo, um, Mean Machine. Just the early Udo years, singer for except, of course, but the early Udo years, to me, he was just, he was on fire for most of his years. Not that he's lost any of that fire, but those first handful of albums, first five, six albums, uh, were just great, stellar musicianship, everything. And, and he's continued to put out the same great kind of stuff. I think maybe it's just that it's maintained the same greatness. These early years, it was like, except on steroids, it was just great stuff. Love this. Had to bring this in. This is Udo's Mean Machine. Sacred Warriors, Master's Command. Sacred Warriors, Master's Command. Yeah, love it. There. The second Sacred Warrior album, great stuff. They, um, the first album was totally a classic. This is like a, the next step up. Production was a little different. Not, not quite as powerful sign as the first album, but there's just no... 
no way that you can't argue that this is still a great album. This is a, a, a reissue um, from a few years ago. And Love Sacred Warrior, um, of all the Christian metal bands of the day, these guys got compared the most to Queen Drake just because of the high soaring vocals. It's the kind of stuff you were looking for. Everybody's wanting to sound like Jeff Tate or Ronnie James Dio. And these guys were the closest you pretty much could get at the time of a the high soaring Jeff Tate vocals. Great stuff. And, you know, these guys have gotten back together. They've done some stuff recently. And, you know, hopefully there'll be some more music coming out. But this is from 1989. Great stuff on their second album. Had to bring Skid Row in. Now, I admit, 1989, I did not listen to this very much. I heard the songs. I loved some of the songs I heard on the radio, but I did not buy this for many years later. And uh, and since then, it's become, you know, just a favorite album. So, had to include it there in this countdown because it has become pivotal. It is the launching point of some great stuff. And I haven't heard the new album, but I hear it's really good. And I really gravitate towards the first two albums for the most part. And then, you know, everything up from there is kind of touch and go, whatever, some hit or miss for me. But this album had to, had to include this. In at number four, Dr. Feel Good by Motley Crue. Huge Motley Crue fan since day one. And so I had to put them in there. I had to include them just because they, up, in this, up until this point, they're still just putting out stellar stuff. Kind of, you know, they, they came back from Theater of Pain, which I thought Theater of Pain was a good album. In the day, it was really different from Shot the Devil, and and then after that, after Theater of Pain, they went back into this kind of a feel, and so I think this album is another return to form, uh, just straightforward, adrenalized metal of the day, and yeah, great songs that are still, you know, still hits today, so great stuff. Number three, this one bounced around too, it, uh, it was toss up between being higher, but the first Deliverance album, to me, is one of my favorite thrash albums, period. I just, this is ingrained in me. Love them. They had a demo and stuff out prior to this. I followed them for a while before this album came out. was finally glad to see a full-fledged album, and it came out stellar. I thought it sounded great. Um, way back when, so the guitar player and singer Jimmy Brown... I believe when this album came out was still in his teens. I can't recall exactly how old he was, but I think he was still, you know, fairly young and a teenager. And I, again, he was one of those ones I occasionally used to talk to on the phone back in the 80s. And I was doing a magazine and stuff, and there was a lot of that connection. And I remember when he called me and played most of this album over the phone to me. And it was just like, a, you know, wow you know he wanted to share it. it was so excited and i admit it's still you know just a great album to this day love it love it love it and then this one gutter ballet by sabotage at number two huge sabotage fan loved all the fact that they've brought all of these reissues out in such stellar packaging and everything and this is like you know a concept album sort of kind of loosely but you know very got symphonic type moments just it's just a really great album. This is still absolutely one of my favorite albums. Cool stuff there. And number one from 1989, Rage of Angels, self-titled. One and only, one and done. impossible to find and when you do find it it's very expensive uh some of the guys from this band went on to join steelheart after this the singer hadn't been heard of for a long time uh, danny and then recently like in the past year or so uh, i saw an interview with him on uh, one of my friends channels on youtube and you know i just this album needs reissued it needs vinyl press it needs cd press it's been out of print and hard to find for so long it is just 80s hair melodic metal masterpiece just everything about it is in my opinion was just stellar and so if you see it buy it if it's a if it's something you can handle price wise i found a copy locally was it maybe a year or two ago and i they wanted 50 bucks for it um and i bought it and i was able to resell it and get my money back um 
But anyway, great stuff. Now, there are a couple that I, you know, I'd love to have. I don't have uh, Warrant, Dirty Rotten. You know, I don't have that. I know that's been recently reissued. I don't have Shotgun Messiah. I don't have Cats and Boots. There's a bunch of albums on the list that could have been on the list had I had the vinyl, but I didn't. So, but that's the ones for this time around, and I will see you later. Rock on and rock hard.